Hi friends, it's so good to see you again. Welcome to another fun Sunday with God. I hope you had a lovely week because I did have a lovely week. Hmm. I hope you were good children to your parents though. Before we start our today's activities, let's say a quick word of prayer. And you know when it is prayer time, you have to close your eyes and you have to focus on God. So let's say a quick word of prayer. Dear Lord, we say thank you for today. Thank you for making us gather together again. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love for our parents. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for all that you do for us. We say be that we're exalted in Jesus' name. King of glory, we ask that as we study your word today, that you help us. We ask, Lord, that you direct us. We ask, Lord, that you grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and retentive memory. And at the end of the day, Lord, only your will will be done in our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. So now it's time for praise and worship. Who is always excited when it's time for praise and worship? Me! I am always excited when it's time for praise and worship as well. So now go get your dancing shoes and let's praise the Lord together. All right, guys. Today, guess what? Say what now? Say what? I am super duper excited to be a child of God. How about you? Say, I'm happy to be a child of God. Say it now. Good. Now put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. This song we're about to do, you know it. Or if you don't know it, you, 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 you can learn it as we sing it. Are you ready? Are you ready? One. Two, come on, put your hands up, come on, like this. Come on, are you ready? With a smile on your face. Come on, come on, woo! Hey! Say, one thing we ask of you, yeah, one thing that we desire, you know right? That as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. One thing, one thing we ask of you. Sing it, say. That as we worship you, Lord, come and change. One more time. One thing. Move your body. Come on. If we run 
Welcome back. Hmm, that prison worship session was so much fun. I danced and I danced and I danced and it was so fun praising God. So now let's do a quick recap of what we learned last week. Last week, our topic was needing God. I'll say that again, needing God. 
And basically, we talked about God being the creator of heaven and earth, and without him, we can't do anything. So we always need God. And who remembers our memory verse for last week? Hmm, anybody? Yes, you're correct. Last week, our memory verse was from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, Imitate God in all you do, because you are his dear children. Let's take that one more time. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, Imitate God in all that you do, because you are his dear children. All right. So this week, our topic is loving others. I'll say that again. Loving others. Hmm. What does it mean to love? Do you love your parents? Do you love me? Do you love Auntie Bumi? Because I love you all. What does it mean to love? Loving someone is putting someone ahead of yourself. Loving someone is showing affection for somebody. Loving means caring for another person. Our memory verse this week is from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2a. And we're going to be reading from the New International Version. The New International Version. And it says, Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Let's take that together. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2a. And it says, Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Wow. This Bible passage is saying that in all that we do, we should always have love in our hearts because, you know, Jesus loved us so much that he died for us. So the Bible passage is saying that we should live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Let's quickly go through our Bible text for today. And our Bible text for today is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. And I'll read, please pay attention, no running about, no eating. Make sure you listen to all that I am telling you. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son, his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved the world, we also ought to love one another. Wow. This Bible passage is saying that God loves us so much that he sent his only son to the world to die for our sins. What greater love than that? God loved us so much. He sent his only son to die for our sins. Wow. I love God because he loved me first. Do you love God? Can you say it with me? I love God because he loved me first. Let's say that together one more time. I love God because he loved me first. Good job. All right. So now we've been talking about God's love and God sending his son to die for our sins. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of love. He showed this love to us by caring for us, by healing the sick, by, by giving unto others. He loved his disciples so much and he commanded his disciples that there is no other thing greater than love. He wanted his disciples to learn how to love learn how to care for others, learn how to be nice to people, to help others. And that was what Jesus Christ came to do. His entire life on earth was just filled with so much love. He was always sharing, caring, and just giving himself to others. He was always preaching. He was always healing people that were sick. Wow, Jesus is such a wonderful person. No wonder God loved him so much. And it was the same love that Jesus came to show us here on earth when he came to the world. So how do you know what true love is? You know, we're talking about love. Let me just give you a few examples of what true love is. True love gives and expects nothing in return. True love is when you give something to somebody, do not expect it in return. If I give you my pencil, I shouldn't expect it in return. I shouldn't expect that you give me your pencil too in return. When you give, just give wholeheartedly. True love does not envy. You are not envious of anybody. You are not envious of your friend in school. You are not envious of what they have. 
True love keeps God's commandment. Hmm. Talking about God's commandments, do you do all that God has asked you to do? Do you do all that your parents have asked you to do? When you obey your parents, that's you keeping God's commandment and that's you showing that you love them. True love is patient and kind. Hmm. Are you actually a patient person? When your mom says, wait, I'm going to get you this biscuit. Are you actually patient enough for your mom to go to the kitchen and get it for you? Or are you just there grumbling? Mommy, I want biscuit now, now, now. No, true love is patience and kind. You have to show love to your parent by being patient towards them. You have to show love to your friends in school, your friends in church, by being patient in, by being patient in all that you do. True love does not delight in evil. When you see other people doing bad stuff, True love doesn't do bad stuff. True love is always obedient, like I said. True love is always sacrificial. True, that, when I mean sacrificial, I mean you can give your all in all. You can give to other people, even when you don't have. Even, for example, if it's your last piece of biscuit, and you know someone that really needs it, and you know someone that is hungry, you will give to the person. That is what true love is all about. So true love is kind. True love is giving. True love is obeying your parents. And true love doesn't expect anything in return. All right, so how do we show true love to others? Let's just go over it one more time. We show true love to other people by helping those who are in need. Like I always say this every Sunday, when you have two pencils and your friend does not have any, what do you do? You share with your friend, you give to your friend. That is true love. That is you showing that you actually care about the person. That is you showing that you're actually a really nice person. And I'm sure the person will be grateful to you for sharing. You show true love by forgiving others. When someone offends you, how do you react to the person? Do you just hit the person of a sudden? No, you forgive. True love is forgiving. True love is you not holding to to a grudge. True love, true love is you not holding to a grudge. True love is you just letting go of all the earth that some might have cost you. And you know, God has forgiven us for all our sins by sending his only son to die for us so that we might be free from our sins. If God has sent his son to die for all of our sins, even the ones we've not committed, imagine we as human beings, when just our friends offend us, we should learn to forgive always. True love is sharing, like I said earlier. True love is you being kind to another person. By obeying your parents, you need to be obedient always. We've said that earlier. And true love is you being respectful to your parents and those older than you, even to your friends, to your teachers in school, to your teachers at church, to everyone around you. When you love somebody, you respect them. You respect their decisions. If they ask you to do something, you do it without grumbling, without complaining. That is true love. And true love is not talking badly about other people. Do you talk about your friends behind their back? That is not true love in any way. As children of God, we should learn to always love others. We should learn to show compassion. We should learn to care for others just as Christ cared for us. God, remember, God sent his only son to die for our sins. What greater love than that? Jesus loves us so much. He doesn't want bad stuff to happen to us. And do you know the reward of just loving people? In return, God will love us and God will take care of us and God will care for us and God will give us all that we really want and need from him. In conclusion, remember we've been talking about true love. We said that true love is kind, true love is patience, true love is being obedient to your parents and being obedient to God as well. I want us as we go into this week to practice true love. Let's be like Jesus Christ who came to the world and commanded us to love others even as we love ourselves. If you love others as you love yourselves, which means whatever it is that you have, you are willing to share with your friends. Whatever it is that your parents tell you, whatever it is that your parents tell you to do, you're willing to obey them. All right, guys, I hope you had so much fun learning today as I did as well. And I hope we'll learn to start imitating Jesus just as he loved the entire world. As we end, let's say a quick word of prayer together. Can we shut our eyes? Dear Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for teaching us all that we learned today. We ask, Lord, that you teach us how to love even as you loved us. We ask, Lord, that you imbibe in us the spirit of love to share our, our to share our toys with our friends, to care for others, and just to love people around us and to be obedient children. 
thank you lord for answering our prayers in jesus name amen all right guys it was fun teaching you today see you next week where we'll be talking about the topic obedience bye for now